the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. A huge rally on Iran outside the United Nations brings leaders and citizens together. A program brings friendships to special needs children. The anti-Zionist rabbi who's employed no more. And more of the Jewish news that's changing your world in this webcast version of the Week in Review. Hello and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. Iran is again the big news in the Jewish world this week. Medium-range missiles, theoretically capable of reaching Israel, were tested by Iran's Revolutionary Guard. And Iranian agencies declared the tests a success. And the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency said Wednesday that Iran had broken agency rules by only recently disclosing the fact that it is building a new uranium enrichment facility. Meanwhile, Iran held a meeting with international leaders on the topic of its nuclear program on Thursday. This all comes in the week after the United Nations General Assembly, where a great many protests took place opposing the leadership of Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, both over the summer's elections and other concerns about his regime. One of the largest protests of Ahmadinejad to take place on U.S. soil had significant Jewish participation. Rebecca Honig Friedman and Christian Neiden report on the rally. Politicians, clergy, and activists from both the left and right gathered outside the U.N. last week to stand for freedom in Iran. But more than any other issue, it was distaste for the visiting Iranian president Ahmadinejad that was on the minds and tongues of most Jewish speakers. It is your responsibility, leaders of the world, and ours here and everywhere, to prevent Ahmadinejad's Iran from becoming nuclear. We congratulate the Helmsley Hotel in Gotham Hall for telling Ahmadinejad, enough is enough, no more. <laughs> The U.S. may be required to let him in, but there's no requirement to let him hold lavish dinners or stay in posh suites. Let him sleep on a park bench. Enough is enough. No more. Yesterday, rabbis of all streams of Jewish life blocked First Avenue and prevented motorcades of the murderous nations from entering the United Nations. Today, I want you to join us in thanking the NYPD not for pr protecting the UN from us, but for protecting us from the United Nations. Elected leaders past and present expressed similar sentiments. I wish that our reviled visitor would be taken to Rikers Island and locked up this afternoon. President Ahmadinejad, who, va who denies the veracity of the Shoah, who has called for the extermination of the Jewish people, who have taken, who thinks of Israel, America's greatest dem democratic partner, being driven into the sea. We will not stand for any more of President Ahmadinejad. If the United Nations is worth the paper on which its charter is written, it will stop Iran from becoming a nuclear power. To see more of the protest and get a sense of the sentiment in the crowds, tune in to the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Rebecca and Christian. Some news about Jewish opinion is shedding light on these issues of international relations. A survey shows a majority of American Jews support a U.S. military strike against Iran to avoid its developing nuclear military capabilities. The survey from the American Jewish Committee was conducted from mid-August to mid-September and showed a 14 percent jump from 2008 in the proportion of American Jews who'd support U.S. military intervention. The survey also provided some valuable benchmarks regarding American Jewish opinion on U.S.-Israel relations, and particularly the dynamic between President Barack Obama and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A majority of American Jews approve of the Obama administration's handling of U.S.-Israel relations, and somewhat more, 59 percent to 54 percent, approve of the Netanyahu administration's handling of the relationship. It's hard to tell if President Obama's handling of the relationship with Israel is met with more or less approval from the Jewish community overall than for our last president, since the American Jewish Committee appears to have never included a similar question about former President George W. Bush in its annual survey. However, one question in this year's survey asked American Jews to characterize relations between Israel and the United States. 81% said somewhat or very positive, while 16% said somewhat or very negative. That question seems to have been most recently asked in 2005, which showed 86% positive and 13% negative. So a slight shift does seem to have occurred in the intervening four years, though in only one of those years has Obama been president. Turning to a different topic, Margie Rahut reports on special needs children participating in a special program. 
It's about bringing kids together. Special needs children are paired off with other children to play, have fun, and learn about each other. Friendship Circle began in Michigan 15 years ago as a program of a local Lubavitch group. Since then, local branches have sprouted up in communities throughout the world. TJC spoke with volunteers and organizers at a local recruitment meeting and peeked in on a special play date where the co-director of Friendship Circle welcomed volunteers into her own home to play with her special needs daughter. As both a leader and a mother in the Jewish community, she explained how Friendship Circle is changing the way people react to those with special needs. Most people are just trapped with fear of the unknown. How do I act around the child with special needs? They look the other way, they don't know what to say. I did get a lot of that when Bracha was born. These people didn't know what to say, they didn't know that it's okay to say Mazel Tov. And it taught me a tremendous amount. I like to tell people that the day she was born is the day I was born because so many of my own fears and insecurities were put to rest. I, I realized that she, this was a very special soul from Hashem. Running the friendship circle basically is bringing that out to the whole community, is that these are very special souls. Yes, they're challenged, but really they came to teach us something. To learn more about Friendship Circle, see the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Margie. Finally, a few items of interest in the ultra-Orthodox world this week. The Sabbath Elevator, which is programmed to move without the need to press buttons, is a boon to those who feel obligated to use it, and an object of scorn for many who don't. But there might be less demand for the elevators soon, thanks to a broad ruling from leading ultra-Orthodox rabbis banning the use of the elevators. The man seen by many as the most important Jewish legal authority in the ultra-Orthodox world, Rabbi Yosef Shalom El Yashiv, signed on to the ban and wrote, In the matter of Sabbath elevators, it is also my understanding that they shouldn't be used on the Sabbath, whether for moving up or down. And in Israel, new government labor statistics find that only 37% of ultra-Orthodox men in the country work for a living, compared to 80% of secular Jewish men. Interestingly, 12% more ultra-Orthodox women are employed than men. And of those who are working, the ultra-Orthodox earn an average of around one-third less than the average secular Jew in Israel. This likely impacts another statistic. A majority of ultra-Orthodox men said they are unable to cover their monthly household expenses, though secular men weren't far behind, with 42% saying they weren't making ends meet. And in Richmond, Virginia, an ultra-Orthodox rabbi has been replaced, seemingly over concerns about his anti-Zionism. In the Young Israel of Richmond's October newsletter, the congregation announced a new rabbi and explained that their previous rabbi, a Hasidic man named Joseph Kolakowski, has been, quote, barred from membership because of his anti-state of Israel views. This announcement follows soon after an August article in a local Richmond newspaper profiling Kolakowski and discussing Hasidic thought, though it didn't touch on the topic of Israel. The synagogue's newsletter declared that the decision to remove Kolakowski came directly from the head of the National Council of Young Israel, Rabbi Pesach Lerner. In announcing the synagogue's new rabbi, Eitan Allen, the synagogue newsletter made sure to note, he is a proud lover of the land of Israel, which he has visited many times and where much of his family resides. That's all for this week. For more news and analysis from the Jewish Channel during the week, please check out our blog, newsdesk.tjctv.com. For the full broadcast version of the Week in Review, including additional stories, interviews, and features, please stop by the Jewish Channel on cable. From all of us here at the Jewish Channel, be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. Io Optimum Cable Channel 291, Time Warner Cable Channel 528, RCN Channel 268, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and Cox Cable Channel 1. For more information, visit tjctv.com.